Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Buster Show podcast. Today, we got a very special guest, and this is the first post-COVID in-person episode, and there's nobody better I could think to do this with than you balls founder, Tim Shields. Tim, welcome to the show. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So first things first, how are you doing? How's everything going? You know, just a little bit of a world crisis going on, but you're navigating a through bit, it. A bit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm going good. It's it's kind of been, it's a fun challenge to sort of navigate um, the, the different things COVID presents. And, and in particular, it's been challenging on the supply chain side in terms of getting the product that a lot of people want in people's hands in somewhat of a good time frame. And so for us, it's just been that little battle of, okay, how do we speed it up? How do we kind of work with the situation at hand and how do we get on a good inventory schedule considering the it takes longer to make units than you would want or it takes longer to get units overseas and into your warehouses than you want so see people always talk about the supply chain but I don't think people really understand what that necessarily means for right, yeah. different things what for you balls situation what what does it mean so totally. there covid hits right now covid hits wave 2 uh, let's say um, almost June 2022, COVID hits wave two in China, right? Yep. And the factories for U-Ball are in China, mm -hmm. so they shut down a lot of stuff, therefore just delaying everything, which then, you know, then things need to be sent on a boat, then things need to be sent to you, then yep. you need to actually sell them, then you need to ship them. What kind of delays are are there? Totally. So there, there's two main ones, but... And, and it depends on what period of COVID it was. So delay number one is the factory themselves. Hey, we have X amount of units we want to make. We need it by this date. Um, so it's in schedule for this particular season. And they're ready to go. And then there's certain lockdowns that happen. And so they can't leave their house, can't make the units on the schedule that you need them to. And they basically can't do anything until certain regulations have been lifted so that they can leave their house and begin working again. So that's delay number one, and then number two um, that's, that we've definitely been experiencing is finally the factory is able to make the units. Um, they're done. They're ready to go. They're ready to ship them overseas to your different American warehouses, and there's a big backup at the ports. And so right. suddenly units either can't leave China or they get to whatever port you're using. A lot of times people use the port of L.A., and they get to L.A., and they just sit there for a month, two, three months. So. Damn. And then, and so there, and you have to still figure out a way to run your business and keep people in check and communicate with people so they understand, hey, here's why the delay's happening. It's not, we dropped the ball, we, we forgot to do our homework right. type of thing. It's, hey, there's just certain situations that so many companies are dealing with. It's not just a, a U-ball thing, but you just have to learn to <laughs> yeah, kind of figure it out and just communicate. The, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the portable basketball hoop market worldwide is just... Uh, it's, kill, it's killer right it's, now. Yeah. It's just getting... <laughs> yeah, portable basketball hoop market. It is the only is thing. Struggling. It yeah. is the only thing in the world that is having difficulties only with one, the supply only chain. One. It's, it's a, it's, we forgot to do our homework. So many millions of people are ordering portable basketball hoops that the ports just can't... They, they don't know what to do. They They're don't like, this U-ball company, it's so young, but it's exploding. We, we don't know what to do with ourselves. It's having too much success... And, uh, I mean, I just got off the phone with the president. He doesn't know what to do. You no, all no just, you no all knows. selling too many <laughs> items. <laughs> the world's shutting down because um, of us. So full disclosure, I, I invested in you all, um, you know, sort of the, my, the way that I look at investments is literally just on a fun basis is totally. like how money fun, out the how I don't care about <laughs> money. It is how fun is this thing? Because I believe that. Whatever I think is the most fun, I'm going to want to be the most involved in, and then I'm going to want to help the most. And if I'm betting on myself while investing in these companies and betting on the other people whom I need to know that they also think it's fun. Yeah. Like I invested in a bagel company. Nobody starts a bagel company without loving bagels. Right. People start hedge funds without loving that process. Yeah. People start... You know, all sorts of things, you know, tech startups. Most people don't enjoy that stuff. Or yeah. if they say they enjoy it, they're lying. Um, right, right, yeah. You know, whereas, you know, when, when I saw Uball first on social, before we even connected, I was just like, this this is... This is fun. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah. This is fun. You know, there's nothing better than, you know, playing playing hoops with people and anything that allows that. And the, the thing that I saw immediately, too, or thought when I saw it for the first time was... 
oh my God, the content opportunities here. Yeah. Because traditionally, when you have a basketball court, it is, it's very expensive to build. It's only in a certain spot. The basketball court does not move unless right. there is some it sort of not. an earthquake, which is, is not a good thing. Takes a world catastrophe, yeah. Yeah, to move a basketball court. And then I, I saw you ball, you know, where, you know, you can theoretically bring it up to the top of a mountain and shoot the Should hoops. we explain what it is, I guess, Yeah, go, go, go ahead. Explain what it is. Sure. 30-second rundown of U-Ball. So U-Ball is two things. U-Ball is a new sport, and it's a new product. So the sport is U-Ball is a new grass or sand version of basketball. So think of it as, like, the beach volleyball version of basketball. So you play it on grass or sand. There's no dribbling. You get three steps. That's the sport of U-Ball. And it's also a product, the U-Ball hoop which is a portable basketball hoop that you can set up wherever you want on grass or sand in a few minutes and allows you to play the sport of U-ball. So the best way to describe it is you play the sport of U-ball on a U-ball hoop the way you play the sport of basketball on a basketball hoop. And then one other thing, the symmetry I usually like to give when I was talking about the, the beach volleyball thing is if you think about volleyball for a second, if we were, say, me and you were having a conversation like in the 1970s and – I said the word volleyball to you in, in reference to the Olympics. All that would have meant is six-on-six six indoor volleyball. Like, that's all volleyball was. But then in the 80s and 90s, they added this professional version of volleyball, beach volleyball. And over time, beach volleyball became its own individual sport, totally separate from indoor volleyball. Right. And if you look at where we are with basketball now, basketball is five-on-five five indoor basketball. That's what it is. There's no beach version of basketball and so that's what you ball is a beach or grass version of basketball and so i think there's a lot of symmetry there between the basketball space and the volleyball space and just the basketball space hasn't been disrupted yet yeah it really hasn't people are trying but it's all just it's very lot, it's analytic i see a lot of analytics based innovation in and basketball. It, it's so similar it's like all right five on five and three on three i don't right. see that big of a difference Right. In those two it's the things. same product. It's, it's the, the same, same viewing it's product. It's the same sport. It looks the same. Usually it's just not as good because all the best talent right. is in the original thing. Um, whereas I think, you know, sort of the advantage here, like I was saying before, you know, with the content opportunities, you can do this on the, in the most beautiful locations in yeah. the world because you're not constrained we can, to We can a, now play you ball in front of the pyramids. Or exactly. in Athens. Oh, that would be amazing. In front of the Roman Coliseum. Right. Or you could in the Coliseum. Sure. I mean, Why battle not? it out to the death, right? It takes us 10 minutes, um, 5 minutes. So, you know, I, I think that without the constraints of a billion dollar arena, make it, yeah. make it, give it the opportunity to be visually different totally. than the three on three, then four on four, then one on one. Yeah. There, I mean, from a, from a actual event standpoint, there's definitely opportunity to make that scenery or viewing experience a little bit more you can make it a little bit more of a work of art because you can you can manipulate it you can decide oh let's do it right on this particular new york harbor or whatever right on the water we can do it right near the statue of liberty we can do it you have a lot of opportunities because you're not constrained to an arena to really have fun with it from a professional viewing experience then obviously there's the more casual experience of someone that wants their own u-ball hoop and can just sort of take it on their vacation or some cool park. So what are what are the parameters? It needs to just be a certain depth of any material, basically. What do you mean? To put the hoop down and have it stay there. So the the the, the current version is one where you basically screw it into the ground the way you've if you've ever seen like a beach umbrella, you screw it into the ground, throw the umbrella on top. Same thing with U ball, you screw it into the ground, throw the hoop on top. Um, but we have a number of add ons coming out soon that allow different ways to basically stabilize it. So we'll have a, a, an add-on coming out soon where you don't have to screw it in the ground. It's a little bit more, a little bit closer to a more traditional portable basketball hoop, but a little bit more made with U-ball in mind. Or we're going to throw one, uh, an add-on where eventually uh, you'll be able to throw it on the back of a truck, so like a trailer hitch add-on, so at a tailgate, so you can throw up a U-ball hoop. Um, so there's a lot of different add-ons that are coming soon. Um, but the original version is you screw it into the ground, throw the hoop on top. It's exciting. What's the best place you've seen somebody set up a U ball? <sighs> There's been some cool ones. I would say um, the the Liberty State Park was cool with with the Statue of Liberty in the background was definitely one. Um, I've seen people play it um, at the the St. Louis Gateway Arch. That's pretty That's cool. Really cool. That's pretty cool. Um, we're, we're not even sold outside the U.S. yet, but someone decided to take it to Greece, and, like, Mykonos was very cool. Wow. 
Um, but I, I think there's a lot of landmark opportunities, especially I just think aesthetically. So too. I think so too. Yeah, I mean, I want to see, I want to see people playing, you know, one on one outside U ball rules in yeah, front yeah. of. I mean, you know, on the space station is probably the crazy or on why the not? moon. Because U ball on the moon. We'll do Could it. Could you we'll imagine? Get, we'll talk Elon. Get it on Mars. That would be nuts. Might, might you think, you think it could go? It could um, screw down on the Mars surface. We would just use the add-on, for you don't have to screw it in the ground. Well, there money. you go. Yeah. Come on, you gotta think ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that, I I'm excited for that day. Um, what what's sort of the goal here with you, Ball? What 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 do you want it to provide? Totally. So I I think the best sort of symmetry I could give is the way I guess a good starting point for what I'm trying to build here is. Think about when basketball was first invented in the late 1800s. So James Naismith invented basketball. He threw a peach basket on a wall in order to entertain his gym class. If you could sort of go in retrospect and think, well, what if when James Naismith invented basketball, he created a company called Basketball Inc.? And Basketball Inc. is the company that makes basketballs. It's the company that sells physical basketball hoops. (laughs) It's the company that runs the portable, or not the port, the the professional basketball leagues, not mm-hmm. just in the U.S. but in Europe and in Asia. And Basketball Inc. is the company that runs this up and coming basketball industry. And that could have been all under one umbrella with one guy, because he invented basketball. He could have created a company that is Basketball Inc. And so I think now with this this new up and coming opportunity, that's what I want to build with U Ball. Is U Ball is this new sport. But U-Ball is a company that creates U-Ball hoops in order for you to play U-Ball wherever you want, all the various product line and add-ons. We're going to have our pro leagues to play the sport of U-Ball professionally, college level, amateur level, and all the things related to basically, this sounds weird to say this early on, but I feel as though I'm not creating a product. I am creating an industry. And this industry is centered around the sport of U-Ball and all the parts of an industry that go into centering around a sport. And so the best way to describe it is if James Naismith had created Basketball Inc., that's the best way to describe what I'm trying to do with U-Ball is that. I love that. Love that. Yeah, it's, it's funny. It's um, like I, I'm trying to think of comparisons in other industries. I mean, maybe like what Walt Disney did with Disney where it was, you know, it was, it started out with the character, like with the characters and then it expanded to the parks, but it wasn't a separate thing at all. Fall fell under one umbrella that was because of the intellectual property. Or I think, and not sorry to interrupt, but I think another one that comes to mind for me is I'm not comparing you ball to Google, but search (laughs) clearly not, but search (laughs) engines could have been an, an entire industry with a lot of different players. But Google did such a good job early on to make where they were the only player in that space because they created the search engine space and they, they, they made the right moves. And because of that, search engines for better, the search engine, the, the search engine space is basically Google. There's, there's other a, players. Google is a verb, basically. Right, exactly. And yeah. so I think that's the only comparison I can truly think of of like, what, what they did a space for the internet. making your company yep. that whole space. I think if you look at, it's not comparable for any other sport, because if you think about every other sport, they were invented way early on. The guy who invented it didn't really know what he was getting himself into, and it just over 50, 70 years morphed into this something way bigger than he ever thought he was getting himself into. And because of that, you piecemeal that entire industry. So for basketball, for instance, NBA gets a large piece of the pie for the U.S. professional space. You got the Euro League, the FIBA, you got Spalding, you got Wilson, and it's just a piecemeal of an entire space um, versus sort of the company that created the space being the space. Right. Well, also the difference with the NBA is the like the corporate office doesn't own the league. Right. The individual team owner is sometimes broken up into many team owners totally. are the ones yeah, who yeah. own the league. Absolutely. When the NBA signs a seven billion dollar T V deal that, that's coming up as of twenty twenty two and you know, it's not the league office that gets the money. Adam Silver does he runs the NBA right. but he listens he is called upon by the owners yeah, who yeah. really run he the works, league. Yeah, he works for the owners. Exactly. Um, so that, that's sort of an interesting standpoint. Do you see there being team owners in U-Ball or is this something that U-Ball is the league owner? 
Totally. I mean, I think, I mean, it'll, it'll play out over time. I think in general, the likely model of this league will not be city-based, franchise-based. It'll be based on, um, especially early on, because if you go city-based, franchise-based, it's going to be really hard to um, have large amounts of people. It, early on in the league, it'll be hard to really pick out truly the best talent. And if you go city and franchise base, it's going to be easy to leave out a lot of top talent where I think the right way to model this traveling league. league. Yeah, it would be some sort of traveling league, but where it's it, it, typically an open entry model where it's tournament based and the cream of the crop rises to the top. And I would say a, a model that comes to mind is um, maybe the PGA tour is a good one that comes to mind. Um, the way professional volleyballs runs, another one they have a lot of... And tennis. Tennis. Basically, the open tournament style where you start to see who are the regular players who are truly the pros, and then you have a certain segment of each event or pro event open to the public in some sort of qualifying type. The big difference, though, is that those are not team sports. How how are teams going to work? Well, volleyball. Volleyball is a team. Right, right. That's so fair. volleyball's... So it would be an open entry. And so volleyball's basically the PGA Tour, but with teams. And so, especially early on in the league, because it's so new, there's so many new players um, that you're seeing quickly, you need to have some sort of open entry model, at least for a certain segment of the players, to be able to make sure you're being efficient with picking the talent. Because if you just simply say, hey, here's our pros for this year, you could probably be leaving out a lot of top talent, um, and it would just be really inefficient in sorting out talent. So it'll be some sort of tournament... To get very tournament the rounds, based. and the way it also will work, it'll be very tournament based, especially and then eventually, early. and then eventually rankings. Yeah, oh, uh, very rankings will be very early. I would say right out of the gate. Um, I would say very tournament based, and the the model I want to do early on the pro league side will be um, less is more. So it'll be very one big event to start, or one or two big events with a number of qualifiers to get into that event. Like I want it to be like. The Kentucky Derby. Right. I don't want it to be like I love the. I'm a huge NBA fan, but there's so many games, and so it, and you're not not necessarily following every regular season game with the same intensity of say a playoff game, but I want I want the initial introduction of U ball on the pro league side to be a big deal, and the way you do that is through scarcity and making it where it's one big thing where you put all your resources into that one or two events versus like more drawn out type of league you know it, it's pretty cool too because you have the aspect similar to tennis where you'll have different uh, you know materials um, you'll have the grass you'll have the sand totally. I guess that's a good one other thing I guess to sorry to interrupt but yeah, go ahead. to throw in is one other thing is if you think about sort of tennis for example just to to mm -hmm. add on your point is tennis is the same sport but it has different court styles too you can play tennis on a clay court yep. you can play tennis on a grass court yep. you can play on a hard court but it's the same sport mm -hmm. same thing with u-balls you can play u-ball on a grass court or you can play it on a sand court but it's or still theoretically even in the water sure i mean uh, i mean for now i think it'll be very grass and sand based to start because a big component of it is the number of steps you get um, so very much will be grass and sand based season 10 in space. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll put, we'll put the Mars. We got to think through the Mars rules more. Um, but yeah, very grass and sand based to start is the two main court styles for you ball. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think long term, I think to start a, the, when we, as we've been introducing you ball, it's been very sand focused cause it's a little bit more jumps out to you aesthetically. Um, but in terms of, a, a down the road pro league, I, my guess would be is it's much more the, – the, there's maybe 75% grass-based versus sand-based just because the viewing product is better in terms of the, the, the player's allowed to be faster. There's a lot more bounce, a lot more explosiveness versus sand is great because it, it's a cool scenery, great vibe. It's very party feel, and it's great for diving because you can just dive right around sand. But it's, there, there's not quite that same level of explosiveness and speed, um, and, and I think that's a lot of what makes – basketball and a version of basketball fun to watch is the athleticism the speed um and so what we've seen at least early on is from a pure in a vacuum viewing product grass is like really awesome yeah from like a pro league standpoint and sand is great for the scenery and the the general feel but the viewing product is awesome but grass is just really great how long do you think it'll take people to get used to not dribbling and is that a 
I don't think it, it, I don't think it takes as long as you think. I mean, when you're first playing, if you're you're, you're playing your first ever game of U ball, yeah, you're gonna probably if you're hooping every day and you're suddenly <laughs> playing U ball for the first time, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna dribble. Probably <laughs> that's just your muscle memory. But I mean, it's from what we've seen so far, like once you play like ten minutes of a game max, like you get you get a feel for the rules. Okay, here's how it works. I get my three steps, and what you start to see is like a really incredible ball movement, and the ball's flying around and. I think, like especially considering the, the the Warriors have had such a good run, and I think they're one of the most fun teams to watch in basketball. If you think about what makes the Warriors so fun to watch, is they have beautiful ball movement. Guys are always moving around. It's not ISO heavy. Everyone's involved, and that that is a a stock U ball game. It's not like <laughs> good fundamentals, right. good coaching. That is a basic U ball game. Is the ball is flying around. You have to keep it moving. Everyone's involved because that's the way you play the game. And I think the other thing that was interesting um, about the rules of U-Ball is it actually takes basketball back to its core. So when James Naismith first invented basketball, there wasn't dribbling. That was added later. It initially started without dribbling. You get it as you got a certain because he invented it on grass. Well, creating the baskets. Maybe yeah. The, I don't the peach I don't, baskets. Yeah, yeah. It definitely was peach baskets. I, I'm not very familiar with what surface he started mm-hmm. on. And maybe it was grass. I just know. I remember the the photos of him with the basket on grass. Sure. Okay. So maybe it was. So, so yeah. that that I mean that even adds to a. I think what's kind of interesting about U ball too is it takes a lot of the rules of the original game of basketball actually back to its core. Um, the dribbling part was added later. Um, and so I think that's really kind of interesting and nostalgic too about you. Dude, the fact that it gets everybody involved, that that's my favorite thing that you've said so far. I mean, that's what it should be. And I think this is something that, you know, like the sport aside, all camps should have because yep. it's much more inclusive than traditional basketball where totally there's always that one kid that's like a hundred times better than everybody gotta else. Gotta get hoops to the I promise school. Dude, that would be cool. That's a great idea. Um, but all, all camps, dude, it's like, you know, I, I think anything that requires, uh, you know, community involvement and uh, cooperation and, totally. I mean, and all that and stuff if, is just good for upbringing. It's for good sure. for youth. And, and, and what's nice, like the rules are so simple, so it's so teachable. It's like you don't have to have this elite level of coordination right out of the gate or else you're going to risk looking bad. Like in basketball, again, I love the game of basketball, but – if you're dribbling a ball for the first time and you've not been practicing for a while, you're gonna, you're definitely not gonna look very coordinated. Yeah. Um, and so what's nice too is is the rules are so simple that it's so easy to pick up for anyone, no matter what your skill level is. And but it's one where it's really simple rules, so like anyone can pick it up. But at the higher levels, there's still a lot of strategy you can take into it because the ball is always moving. You got to be drawing up different pick plays, off ball pick plays. Or is it like yeah. what ping pong is to tennis, U ball to basketball? Oh, I would. Or what hope is the not. difference? I would hope not. I would. I, think <laughs> of, I would absolutely hope not. I, I I think of ping pong as sort of. I mean, ping pong's great, but uh, it, Olympic it's sort of, ping pong is pretty crazy. though. Yeah, it very much is. No, I, it's it's high level. It, it, I think of that as very. I mean, clearly, U balls the littlest of brothers to basketball. My go- again, when I when I say some of these things, it is not over a three to five year period. It's like a over maybe twenty, thirty year period. My goal is eventually you balls thought of as like a brother to basketball. Is mm-hmm. is the goal. I mean it's right. not gonna happen anytime soon. But the goal is you balls thought of as like that brother to basketball. Yeah, the beach that, volleyball, which the beach volleyball, yeah. I'd say beach volleyball is more popular than indoor volleyball. Right. To the regular outside right, non volleyball yeah, yeah. fan. Definitely. I mean, you don't drive by and see somebody playing indoor volleyball for obvious reasons. But right, yeah. um, you know, anytime you go to a beach, literally anywhere, yeah. you see people people playing beach volleyball. Totally. So and, it, it is and, interesting that and, there and, isn't and, that. And what I definitely want to make sure is clear is U ball is not a competitor to basketball. U ball takes place in basketball's off season. I, I never want to have it set up where U ball would ever be competing with basketball. It's I want it to very much be a compliment to basketball. And when the NBA Finals ends is kind of when U-ball season begins. And so guys that just love hooping, period, can get a new version of it, a, a, a alternate version of it, in the basketball offseason. Um, so that, that, that's the other thing, is I don't want ever to, it to ever have to be basketball versus U-ball. It's very much, I think, good compliments right. to each other. Yep. 
No, that ma- that makes perfect sense. Um, I, I I think that's a good note. And NBA players like doing it too. I saw that video of Lonzo. Yeah, playing, Lonzo, uh, playing Drew Holiday Ball. loves it. Um, I, it it's funny. It, different guys like it for different reasons. A couple of different guys like it more for the casual. Let's just have fun on a vacation or on the beach sort of thing. Um, but some guys like using it for for training purposes because running in the sand is is, is quite the workout. Um, and so a, d- a different way to train and it's pretty easy on your joints. Um, so it, that's, it's, that's it's a really, really interesting point too. So it's, it's really low impact. If you're playing on right. sand, sand's really low impact. Grass is regular impact from what you see in football or whatever. Right. Uh, but sand's super low impact. That's interesting. In terms of just playing it, have you seen people playing in the water as well? Like putting it on the, on the Not sand? Not really. Shallow? I mean, I'll see people throw it sort of in a yard in a nearby pool. I mean, I don't right. see a bunch of the pool base. The water base is not much of the focus right now. The, the focus is very much grass and sand considering how much real estate that covers on the earth and just how, how often people are there. Water's awesome, but not really the, the true focus of the company now. But, I mean, it's, it's a clear, obvious thing to throw in there. Right. For sure. Yeah, man, it's, it's going to be exciting. What's the timeline looking like? When do you want a league to happen? Or does it start? Uh, does it, how does this start? Totally, yeah. So it, the, the way we're approaching it is sort of staggering the product part of the company and the league part of the company in terms of the product part of the company is first um, because I want to make sure the units are readily available to people so as they start seeing the sport in a more professional, legit competition setting, units are available for people. So the next year, probably two years, focus very much on the product side. And I would say within the next two years, we'll start really introducing the league. Uh, probably one big event to start either, I don't know, one big city, either L.A., New York, or wherever would make sense. But I would say two years before the league's really a, a big focus because um, – I mean, the, the, the supply chain issues, again, are making it a little bit harder to move on the product side at fa- as fast as we would want. Right. Um, but definitely product first so it's available for everyone so that when you start promoting the league and this new sport and this, the competitive side of this new sport, people are ready to get their own, their own U-ball hoop when, when they start seeing it and want to play for themselves. Right. And it's a lot more accessible than, I mean, you know, obviously – this isn't the NBA's goal. The NBA's goal is just to sort of raise the awareness of basketball and get more people playing right. basketball and enjoying it because at the end of the day it is content. That's where if you look at the majority of dollars that flows totally. in, it's the TV. It's not yeah. the, you know, basketball hoops. But to get an industrial sized, you know, NBA arena type hoop, ten to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, and, and sometimes more or, or think about this, like a big focus of the NBA right now is their Africa initiative. NBA Africa is, a, is an awesome initiative, awesome program. Yeah. And think of it, I mean, with U-Ball now, we can get hoops to all of those different villages for such a fraction of the cost and such a fraction of the time. It's so needed, dude. Yeah, it's I mean, so it's, needed. I mean it, it's something we have sort of in our pipeline. I think, again, Working through these supply chain it's issues. Just about will help getting them. all the units. Right. I mean, it, I mean, again, it's 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 not uh, to be to clarify. These are units that have been on the market. People are getting them now. We have the next wave of units we're waiting on, basically, and they're they're coming soon. Um, but just that's 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 the one next thing we're working on. But um, thinking through the Afri- U-Balls Africa initiative is very important because it's so obvious. It's, it's so, so obvious. obvious. It's a fraction of the cost. You can do it basically in a week if you want. Mm-hmm. If you had enough units, you could get most every village in Africa in a week. We could we could get units there. Because, I mean, <laughs> you set these pretty... things up and you get it set up in 10 minutes. There, You now have a U-ball court wherever you want. Yeah, that, that's pretty crazy to think about. Um, how many do you want to get to Africa? As many as possible? I mean, again, I, this, uh, I haven't done, like, legit research on it. Um, right. I bet but the, I, the, yeah. the, 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 I mean, I think what I would say is the goal would be basically every village in Africa at least has two to four four courts 